Hi everybody. Today's video is a birth announcement video. This is a big birth announcement. This is MJ. These are the medium sized Labradoodle puppies from Van Isle Doodles and our big sky litter. And not only has this litter got a big name with the big sky in it, but it is a huge litter. It is a record litter of 14 Labradoodle puppies. Holy smokes, that is a lot of puppies for one mama dog to have in one litter. It is basically two litters in one. In today's video, we're going to introduce you to all of the puppies, tell you a little bit about the whole birth process, and just give you their weights and some information on their genders and their colors and patterns. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Isle Doodles, and we could not be more excited to tell you about our blue sky litter of Labradoodle puppies. Now, sort of like Texas, Alberta is a big place and does everything large. And Rocky, who's the sire for this litter from Puppy Love Labradoodles, well, he certainly obviously wanted us to have everything supersized for this litter with 14 Labradoodle puppies. Oh my goodness, Mama MJ, she just deserves a medal for being such an amazing Labradoodle mama dog. She just handled the whole thing so well. She was never upset about anything. Thing. She delivered every one of these 14 puppies all on her own. She didn't need any assistance. Well, of course we were there and helped her through, but she did them all without any drugs or veterinary assistance, nothing at all. And part of that is a great testament to her amazing guardians. Anna and Craig have taken such great care of MJ and ensured that all of her nutritional needs have been well met. And that meant MJ was in excellent shape and really good condition and was able to withstand the rigors of having 14 puppies. Now I can tell you, when the last four were born, she was really not even lifting her head up too much. They were just coming out, she would look at me and go, can you help me with this? And I would clean the puppy up for her and then she would lick the puppy but she wasn't uh, quite as involved as for the, the first uh, 10 puppies when she was right there with me doing everything uh, right along with me. Now with this litter was also born on a day when Reynolds was off delivering food orders for curated canines. So I was here by myself to deliver the, the 14 puppies. So it was quite a, a busy time for us and I was so thankful that we had Taylor here to help us with the other puppies who were already born and Hazel who was expecting didn't deliver her puppies until a few hours later. Now today we're going to go through the puppies. We're going to do them all in birth order. Every one of our video litter updates for our Big Sky Labradoodle puppies will be done in birth order. But we have two puppies, the last two born, who are not here with MJ. <clears throat> As I said, Hazel had a litter just a few hours after MJ did. And Hazel had six puppies in her litter. That's our Snowdrops litter of mini Labradoodle puppies. So we took the last two puppies that were born to MJ and we gave them to Hazel. 14 puppies is very, very draining on a mama Labradoodle and we wanted to make it as easy as possible for MJ without overtaxing Hazel. So eight puppies for Hazel as a mini Labradoodle is a good number. I wouldn't want to give her any more. And 12 for a medium Labradoodle is still a lot, but MJ is handling it very readily. Now MJ only has eight spots at her milk bar. She's missing two nipples in, in her midsection. So the puppies have to rotate. So what we do as a breeder, of course, is to monitor the puppies constantly. We also monitor our mama Labradoodles constantly. With the puppies, we weigh them multiple times for the first two weeks to ensure that everybody's gaining and there isn't a puppy, for instance, that's maybe way off in terms of weight gain. If that happens, then we come in and we rotate the puppies for mama Labradoodle MJ. However, so far, the puppies continue to gain weight really well. She's doing an excellent job with it. There's no complaints. When she gets up and goes outside, when she comes back in, then there's a little bit of squawking. But you can see how they're all lined up here. If Reynolds just puts the camera down here, you can see they're all lined up and you can see there's even an opening right now. And that's because they are all managing to get their fair turn. There's a couple of puppies back here that you probably can't see behind me right now. Now MJ herself 
right after the birth, so today is Sunday, these puppies were born on Thursday, uh, right after the birth, she was uh, very hungry, which is normal. So we gave her her food and everything was fine. And then on Saturday, she was eh, not really too hungry. And she was uh, throwing up after she drank water. At first I thought, well, she was just drinking a lot of water and, and she just had, had been gulping too much. But as a Labradoodle breeder, you know your dogs and you know what happens when a litter is delivered and you know what to look for. So we took MJ's temperature and it was a little bit high. She was spiking a fever. So because of that, we then took her to the vet and arranged to, to have her examined. So what it was or what we expected is, is she probably had a retained placenta. She did have two puppies who were born without a sac. And so what we are doing is treating her for that. So she is on a course of very safe antibiotics that are perfectly fine to go um, with the puppies while they're nursing. And then she had an injection um, of a drug that helps to clean her out. Uh, it's not oxytocin, which is a drug you hear about a lot with respect to uh, Labradoodle mamas, all dog mamas. Uh, breeders use that drug in consultation with their vets. If you have a girl who's not able to deliver her puppies or if you need to clean your girl out afterwards, if you do have a retained placenta. But after 24 hours, oxytocin doesn't work because the uterus has now gone to sleep and it says, okay, now I'm, I'm going to recover and get back to normal. Uh, so this is a different drug. Uh, so we gave her an injection of that yesterday and we will inject her with that again today. And uh, we will, of course, monitor her temperature. If things haven't improved, then we will go get um, another injection to give her. Totally safe for the puppies, uh, no problem at all there. Really all it does is open the cervix up a bit so that everything can flow out easily because you don't want to have the uh, placenta inside mummy because that is what costs the temperature by creating a little bit of an infection. So she's doing great now and her appetite is definitely back. She is, however, not too keen on raw food right now, so she's eating freeze-dried raw instead and some roast pork. She does like the roast pork. So now let's get to the main event and introduce you to all of the puppies. Well, the first 12. The other two puppies we will leave with Hazel and we will do with Hazel's uh, video litter updates. That's so we don't confuse the mums. If MJ saw her two puppies, she would know they were hers by scent and it would cause her a great deal of stress to have the puppies removed. So we'll leave them over there. Once the puppies are weaned, then we'll reintegrate them to their, uh, this family. So the first puppy born was Pink Collar. Now it may take me a little while to find everybody because we have quite a pile of puppies here. And we'll let MJ tell us how much she's going to let me show you the puppies. She may ask that I not lift them up. And we do whatever Mama wants. And the reason we don't do the birth announcement absolutely immediately is because we want to be sure that Mom and puppies are all settled in together. So now let's just see if I can find pink color. Three, four, five, six. Here she is. There we go. Hello. Hi. There we go, MJ. Is it okay for mommy to look? Yeah. Let's show everybody. So pink color is one of the few females in the litter. And she is a chocolate phantom. Now you're going to hear me say several times that a puppy is a chocolate phantom or a sable. Now the reason why I'm saying that is because puppies who are sable, which is what MJ is, are born looking like they're phantom, but as time goes on, the phantom goes and they are actually sables. Sable is dominant over phantom. Now this little girl, I'm going to say, is not a phantom, I don't think. I don't really see any markings. So she's going to be probably a chocolate puppy. Uh, I don't even think she's sable. She may be. The, one of the ways you can tell is if they have a black line down their back. So sable is black ticking and tipping on the coat and banding of colors. And it looks like there might be some black in there. It's a little bit hard to tell this young. So this little lady was born at 12.10 in the afternoon on December 21st, 2020. 
uh, oh no, sorry, <laughs> January 21st, not December, January 21st, 2021. Lots of 21s in this one. And when she was born at 12.10 p.m. on the 21st of January, she weighed 217 grams. So that's quite a nice size. Now puppy number two is green collar. Puppy number two was a little bit bigger and took a little bit longer to be born. MJ gave me a little squeak when he came out. If I can find him, there's orange. Oh, here he is back here. Green collar is a black male. And he has this gorgeous, shiny ebony coat. And he has a little smidge of white hair. Not very much though, but he does have that adorable goatee. The little goatee comes from, uh, just from the little bit of party that's come through from MJ. Rocky does not carry for party. So any of the white markings you see are all courtesy of MJ. And this little ebony boy, Mr. Green Collar, he was born at 12, 17 p.m. and he was 221 grams. And I'm sorry, this is not the puppy that was the squeaker and took a little while to be born. It's the next one purple collar here is purple collar and we'll just take purple collar off there purple collar is having a turn at the milk bar so probably not too thrilled to be moved so purple collar is a male and he did not arrive until 1 14 p.m and he weighed 268 grams so that is quite a big puppy and he did make mama have a little squeak yes you did you made your mama squeak when you were born and he may be a sable as well. It looks to me like he has a little bit of black down his back, but we'll wait and see on that. Right now, he's a really beautiful, rich chocolate color. And you can see his little pink tongue out there because he was nursing. And so he hasn't put his tongue back in yet. And you can see MJ is just so beautifully calm. She's not worried at all that we're handling the puppies. Now, of course, we do handle them every day, multiple times during the day. But sometimes mamas don't like it if you pick them up and put them right next to you. Whenever she does allow us to do that, we put them right up next to our necks, let them get our scent and become used to us so they're comfortable with us right from the get-go. Next to be born is dark blue collar. Now let's see if we can find dark blue collar. That's gray. We just have to go through the pile here a little bit. Oh, there we go. There's dark blue color collar. Now this puppy is definitely a sable. And you will be able to see quite clearly what I'm talking about in terms of that line down the back. So you can see that blue color boy is a brown color, but he's definitely got more red in there. Not as rich of a dark chocolate brown as the previous two puppies, um, but more of a sort of a reddish mahogany kind of shade. And then this is the stripe down the back. This will go, this will disappear. This will stay while the puppy is a puppy, but it will end up going away. And you can see those same similar dark spots there on the face, around the eyes, on the muzzle and the ears. I don't my angel. And you can see how this puppy looks like a phantom because those tan tips are there, but this is not a phantom. These markings are all going to end up blending together because this is a sable boy. And this little fellow was born at 1.28 p.m. and he was 265 grams. So he was almost as big as his brother before him. Again, a really good size. The next one is light blue, who's right here, very handy. And there, we'll just trade here. Let your brother have that. Hey, light blue was the first caramel puppy to be born. Oh, you got a little hair on you there, love. There we go. Light blue is also a boy. We have lots and lots of boys in this litter. So this is a really pretty caramel boy with a little bit of white around the face. And there you see another one of those pink tongues out just because he was just nursing. Just a really pretty little puppy. Very nice, rich caramel shade. And Mr. Light Blue was born at 2.44 p.m. So we had quite a break there. And he was 208 grams. He is the second smallest puppy in the litter. And the biggest puppy in the litter is that uh, dark blue, the chocolate sable that we did just uh, before the, this puppy. So that's light blue. Next we have orange collar. Here, there's a spot for you right there so you can go back to eating. There you go, right there. 
Do you get it? Yeah. Now you'll hear me talking to them, but I'm sure you're well aware that the puppies are born with their ears sealed shut so they don't hear anything and their eyes are also sealed shut so they don't see anything. I'm just going to have to move my position here a bit. Now it's a little bit cramped in here and you may wonder why we have such a small whelping box. We will probably move them but initially we have this smaller size box so that the puppies don't get lost. Then they, they can never stray very far away from MJ and that way they're not way over here and crying and unable to find their way back to mom. And how do they find mom when they can't see or hear? It's all with the nose. Their nose is the only sense that is working right now and it has special heat seekers in it. So they can tell if I come in the box, they have no idea that I'm not um, their mom. They'll be drawn to me just from my body heat. But when MJ's here, then of course it's her body heat they're drawn to. MJ's body heat is also what keeps them warm. Uh, the ambient temperature in the room is also turned up, uh, but it's MJ who keeps them warm as the puppies are not able to control their body temperature at this point. So orange collar, orange collar is another little boy. He was born at 3.20 p.m. and he was 238 grams. And you can see he has a lot of lovely white markings on his chest and other under his chin there. He also has the really pretty little white dip toes. Very handsome little fellow. Hey buddy, hi, hi, hello, hi. Very nice little head. This is gonna be a really adorable little puppy, I think. So that's orange collar. And now after orange collar was finally a girl. And that is red collar girl. If we can locate her. That's purple down there. Let's see if there's somebody hiding back here. Well, yes, and guess who it is? It's red collar. So I'm just going to take red collar. Let's put her here for a minute and put orange back here because there's a spot open here on the back if he happens to want to eat. Hi Red. Now Red Collar Girl, she too is a sable. You can see the line on her back. Now she's got a little less red in her coat than the previous sable puppy so she's a little bit more brown but you can see those dark sable markings around her face on her nose, her eyes and her ears. And she has some white on her chest too. Hi, pretty girl. And this little pretty girl. Oh, goodness me, don't be so squirmy. Yeah, hello. This little girl, she was born at 3.40 p.m. And she was 237 grams. So very nice size. All these weights are pretty typical for medium-sized Australian Labradoodle puppies. Next is a yellow collar. Oh, and yellow's going to be mad because we're coming off here and I'm going to let red have a turn. There we go. Now, yellow collar, he is another sable and he's back to this really pretty mahogany type shade. Again, you can see those tan points right now. These are the ones that you are not going to be see, see as the puppy matures. There's that dark line again. And then again, the darkness on the face and the ears. And Mr. Yellow Collar Boy was born at 5.24 p.m. So we had a really long break between uh, Red Collar Girl and this fellow. And he was 256 grams. So he is a really good size when he was born. He's a little chunker. After that, we have Gray Collar. I'm pretty sure it's up here. Yes, here's Gray Collar. Hi, Gray. Hi, bud. Now yellow will be mad because there's no spots that are open right now. Oh, light blue just sort of let go. So, oh, I'm going to just, oh no, light blue says not quite finished. Gray collar. Gray collar is a male and he is a beautiful rich chocolate. Now this is not a sable I'm pretty virtually positive because you'll see there's no line here. Beautiful, beautiful, really dark chocolate. And you get those darker shades because Rocky, the sire of the litter, is black. And so that helps sometimes to bring out the deepness of the chocolate colors. And he doesn't have any white on him, I don't believe, anywhere. Do you? Can I just turn you upside down? Oh, thanks. Nope, no white. This is an all chocolate pup puppy. Mmm, very delicious. Now you saw just there when I was checking that I just took a moment and put the puppy upside down. 
This is something we do every day with the puppies. This is called early neurological stimulation. And we'll talk a bit more about that at the next uh, video that we do when they open their eyes. But basically what it is, is getting the puppies used to just a very few seconds of stress every day to help them already learn that everything's good. If something unusual happens, it's okay, it's safe, nothing bad happens to you. And we also already are handling their feet all the time. So now Mr. Gray Collar, he was born at 5.49 p.m. and he weighed 244 grams. Next on the list is Brown Collar, who's over here. There we go. There you go, Gray, you can go snuggle up. Brown Collar, collar is another sable and another girl. Yay, finally another girl. Oh my goodness, it took a long time to get a girl. So she is another chocolate sable. Well, she's, I call them all chocolates, but really it's, this is more of a, a brown, not really chocolate. Chocolate is probably reserved more for the very dark brown colors. And I don't believe she has any white on her at all either. No, nope, doesn't look like it, does it? I just turn you upside down for a sec. Yep, no, there is no white on this puppy. So she is just a lovely mahogany shade and she's a beautiful sable. And Miss Brown was born at 7.49 p.m. So we had a two hour break between gray and brown and she came in at 214 grams. So she's one of the tinier puppies yet. Two one of the tinier puppies. Next we have uh, black collar, and I am reading all my notes here because with 14 of them, I don't remember all of them. And you'll see me refer to notes throughout the process when we do all of our video updates, just because there are so many of them. Here's black collar. Nope, you're gray collar, sorry. Where is black collar? Oh, no, my goodness me. You heard a little bit of protest. It's amazing how much noise. Oh, this is black collar. Black and gray look so much alike. Uh, it, it's incredible how much noise very small puppies can make. Yes, this is also a girl. Hi. Hi. And another one of the caramels. Oh, it's so pretty. Yes, a little bit of light color in amongst this box of chocolate puppies. Same sort of shade as light blue color. Very pretty, nice golden caramel color. And some white on the chest there. Let me turn you upside down, everybody see? Yeah, lots of white on the chest and some white on the toes there too. And Black Collar Girl was born at 8.04 p.m. and she was 220 uh, grams. So that's Black Collar. And next, and the last one in this group, this is the last of the 12 that are here with MJ, is Peach Collar Girl. Oh no, Peach is, yes, no, Peach is a boy. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. And Peach is another one of these uh, sable puppies. And again, you can really see strongly that you would be easily fooled and thinking this was a phantom when indeed this is a sable puppy and you can tell from that line on the back there. So how did the sable show up? Well, MJ herself is a sable, so that's where that comes from. And as I said, sable is dominant over phantom. So despite the fact that MJ carries for phantom and Rocky is a phantom, all you need is one allele that is sable, which is AY, that's the allele, and then that's what your little puppy is going to be. Yes. So Peach was born at 9.50 p.m. Again, we had a, a two hour break there between Black and Peach. And she, he rather is the tiniest one in the litter at 181 grams. And then the next two puppies, one is a male, one is a female. Um, and they are also sables. And the last puppy was born at 22 minutes past 10 in the evening. So we started at 12.10 in the morning or in the early afternoon and we were finished at 10.22 in the evening. So it's a very long day. MJ was absolutely exhausted. We were exhausted. Reynolds had come home so he was here for the last half of the litter, uh, which was really helpful. Taylor came and uh, also was here so that she could help me with the other puppies because uh, MJ and I did not leave this room for the uh, a whole 10 and a half hours it took for the puppies to be born. 
So now we're going to do the same birth announcement video for our Snowdrops litter, which is where the last two puppies are with Hazel. So we invite all of our families from this litter to please watch those litter updates as well so you can see those puppies and their updates and know what's happening with everybody in this beautiful big, big litter, our big sky litter with our incredible mama MJ. And if you just take a look at her, you can see just how completely relaxed she is. Now we have a little bit of news about MJ in that this will be her final litter. We have planned to have an, one more litter with her. Most of our girls have three litters, uh, but we will be retiring MJ once she weans these puppies. This is a significant uh, physical drain on a girl and I do not want to ask her to to give any more so we will be retiring this beautiful mama and uh, letting her enjoy many many years now as a beloved companion dog so we hope you enjoyed the video um, and don't forget to watch the snowdrops litter update you may want to consider subscribing to our channel and then you'll get notification of all of the litter updates we tried to give you a little bit of information on each video that's unique so that you always have something a little bit we hope that you enjoy learning about and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this litter update, please give us a thumbs up if you have a chance. And we will see you again. Our next video update for the Big Sky Litter of Labradoodle Puppies will be when these puppies open their eyes. And that will be when they are about two weeks old or so. So thanks so much for watching.